How's it going guys? Hope you're having a great day. This is Art of Zod with a new speed paint video of a fennec fox with commentary. So the purpose of this video is just to cover the main aspects from start to finish of this particular study. I won't be covering everything, so if there's anything I've missed out, feel free to hit them in the comments below and I'll get back to you. But without further ado, let's get started. So before I begin the study, I always create a border and this border is, is in line with the reference. This is just to ensure that the composition remains the same as what I've done. Uh, usually without, if you do a study without creating a border, you won't know where the picture begins or where it finishes. So it's always good to, so it's, it's good practice to put this down first. And as you can see, I've begun blocking in the fennec by using straight lines only. It's kind of similar to doing negative space, basically. So I'm comparing the edges, looking at how far the fennec is from the from the edges of my border, and then I def, de, kind of decide from there on how far it, it's in the, in the center, and then then I start doing comparisons between the horizontal and vertical relationships between the background and the fennec. And I've also just quickly blocked in the background as well, as you can see, just add a bit of lines in there. So as you can see now, I'm just basically fixing things. If I see that something isn't right, I'll erase it and then go over it again. Just keep doing that until I'm satisfied with the shape I've created. Once I'm happy with the straight lines, then I'll obviously so soften them up. So I've quickly gone into doing the blocking of the background here. I'm keeping it relatively simple. I don't worry too much about making it too accurate. It's just about getting down the colors that I see, give it some contrast to when I start doing the fennec. One good way to, to achieve this is to squint your eyes and see what colors you see and just try your best to mark them down. It's always good to think about what colors you see as well and try not to assume too much. If you're not sure about what colors you see, then feel free to do small little swatch studies against the reference and see what you feel is right. This is where the blocking of the fennec itself begins. So you're spending a lot more time in this part than anything else because the blocking part is pretty much the bulk of the study. Because all you're doing is looking for color, finding shapes that are on the fennec in relation to what you are painting. So the objective here is to find the shapes and what colors they produce overlapping any colors you think that are not right or they may be right but applying more color on top of color can sometimes benefit with what you see and this is where i start using the older 50 percent stroke method that i do normally so i tend to pick a color set the brush to 50%, then make a stroke, then I drop that stroke I've made, then set it back to 100% again. So I've kind of got the mid value, mid color of that particular, of that particular color. And then I can use that and then I keep going forward from there. Naturally, the, if you're still trying, if you're still new to it, then it's best to always just go at the palette and make the necessary changes, necessary color choices from there on. Well, I tend to find what, what I do more easy for myself. But again, this is all about discovering how you approach painting. So there's, there's no right or wrong way to, to do this. There's always a way that you, you should feel comfortable in doing it. As long as you're, as long as you're observing the color, you're observing what you see, that's what's good. So I'm focused on the eyes here, trying to make sure that what I see is what's what's been applied to the to my study here. 
I always get sometimes get drawn into little intricate parts like this. But I have to remember that during the blocking stage, you don't have to go into detail that much. It's all about capturing what you see, capturing the color that you see, and giving that illusion that it's all coming together. The illusion of of how colors interact with each other to, to create that realistic feel that the photo has. So during this part, I'm starting to add shapes along the belly and legs, trying to give a sense of direction to the fur. That's one of the things you have to think about when painting animals. They have a specific direction of how their fur works. And the more time you spend on it, the more you start to understand the shape, how the, the direction they go. It's good stuff to, to spend as much time as you can on the animal of choice, understand how, you know, how the fur works and what direction it flows. Just resize the body there because of mine it was slightly longer. So again, this is all about correcting things, making sure things look right. Don't feel afraid to make those changes where necessary. I also fixed some elements of the background as well, just to bring the contrast in on what's going on under the phoenix so sometimes the background can influence the foreground so making changes here and there is necessary to make sure that things look visually look as close as possible to the reference so i removed the line work here i'm starting to erase the line work away because it's no longer needed now for where i'm going with this piece because the blocking kind of visually shows me the what the fennec looks like now, so the line work is no longer needed. So I flipped the canvas here, and the point of that is just to refresh my eyes, and it helps me see if there's any mistakes that I've missed out. So it's always good to flip the canvas when possible. Given the timing I've got for the study, there's only so much I can fix in the time I've given, so I'm trying my best to fix as much as I can any any major mistakes. But if there's still if there's still time available, I'll do my best to rectify any any mistakes. But it's good practice to flip the canvas as much as possible if you're in doubt if something look, doesn't look right. Spend time to fix it. So I've moved on to the rendering stage now. Uh, I, I now set the brush to a pressure sensitivity brush and all I'm doing is softening out certain edges but still keeping the flow of the contrast from what was done on the on the blocking. I don't want to lose that those those edges that I created so it's just a case of softening areas up and adding bits of fluff here and there just to think just to bring things out. So I'm being really cautious about how much I blend and how much I push away the edges because if you go too far, you end up with a really blurry, blurry fennec and you don't want that. So I'm being really careful about how, what areas to soften out and which areas to keep intact. I also start to apply some details here and there just to make sure that the edges are still there to bring up little intricate details which comes to my final step now, which is the details part. This part really takes pretty much the last end of your study. It shouldn't take anything more than 15 minutes or 20 minutes if you want to be really nitpicky about detail. But this is where you can really go crazy. But always focus on the point of interest, in this case, the face. As you can see on the reference, the body is kind of blurred out. So focus on the face, focus on the ears, the whiskers, and things like that.
So I'm coming near to the end of the study here. I'm just working on the background. I, don't, I try not to spend too long on the background either because it's not the point of interest, but it's always good to just add a bit more balance to what you've done. So even though the fennec has been painted nicely, it's always good to just quick just bring the background up to that level or somewhere close and before knocking it back a bit. So I've now bled out the, the tail and body part just a bit there, just so it pushes it back. And adding bits of detail here and there just to spruce it up. So I'm going to end my commentary here. If there's anything I've missed out on, feel free to hit them in the comments below. I'll get back to you. But yeah, thanks for watching guys and enjoy the rest of this video. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. Also, if you wish to support my work and these videos, consider subscribing to my channel and becoming a Patreon. Again, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you soon.